What's up YouTube fam? This is the commentary blog where I like to use familiar scenes from movies and TV shows to illustrate biblical truth. Let's get it. And here we go. The night is darkest just before the dawn. I promise you, the dawn is coming. In the 2008 movie, The Dark Knight, Gotham City finally seems to have its white knight and Gotham's district attorney, Harvey Dent. The Batman is unable to show his true identity, therefore Harvey Dent provides Gotham City with a legitimate ray of hope, as he's able to put away the bad guys, all while showing the average citizens that it doesn't take flashy weapons and a mask to be a hero. Unfortunately, the Joker attempts to destroy the hope of Gotham by turning their beloved Harvey Dent into a villainous murderer. So Harvey and his girlfriend Rachel are portrayed by the ones that were sworn to protect them. Rachel dies in the process. This event causes Harvey to go on a rampage of revenge. Harvey then kills five people and threatens the lives of many other people before he falls to his death. However, Batman preserves the hope of Gotham by taking all the crimes of Harvey Dent upon himself. Listen to Batman's response when Commissioner Gordon realizes that evil is about to win. I killed those people. That's what I can be. No, no, you can't. You're not. I'm whatever Gotham needs me to be. Gordon. You'll hunt me. You'll condemn me. Set the dogs on me. Because that's what needs to happen. Now, I love the fact that Batman says, You'll hunt me. You'll condemn me. Set the dogs on me because that's what needs to happen. In other words, someone still has to pay the price for the crimes that were committed. This scene loosely reflects the theological term substitutionary atonement. The phrase substitutionary atonement means that Jesus Christ died in the place of sinners as our substitute so that that death sentence could be nullified. What? Okay. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now you may remember when Abraham was asked by God to sacrifice his son Isaac. I know, that's crazy, crazy. However, in the last minute, God provides a substitute, a ram that would die in the place of Abraham's son, Isaac. Now this concept is ultimately fulfilled when Christ substituted himself in our place so that we might have eternal life. You can say that Christ took the fall for us. We are the true criminals. Jesus traded all of his riches and glory to lower himself like us to be hunted by men and put to death. Before we can see the cross as something being done for us, we have to see the cross as something that was done by us. Did you get that? Before we can see the cross as something being done for us, we have to see the cross as something that was done by us. So even though we were responsible for sin's debt, Christ paid it for us. Romans 5.8 says it like this, but God proves his own love for us so that yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even though we were the criminals, God in his perfect love substituted himself in the place of us to die to death that we should have died. Yet God saved us and gave us hope and a new life. He restored us. Now I really like the next scene where the commissioner's son asked the question, why is Batman running? Because we have to chase him. Okay, we're going in! Go, go! Move! You didn't do anything. 
anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. The begotten son, Jesus Christ, did nothing wrong. Yet, he was treated like the criminal that we were, so that we, being the criminals, could be treated like sons and daughters. Just let that soak in. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now this next scene will provide the answer for why Batman chose to take all of this upon himself. Basically Batman is about to be hunted by armed men and trained dogs. Yet the commissioner assures his son that it's going to be okay. Listen to why that is. Because it's the hero Gotham deserves. But not the one it needs right now. So we'll hunt him. Because he can take it. Because he can take it. I admire the fact that Batman is willing to take upon himself the sins of another man so that he can keep the faith and the hope alive in his city. But just think. As Christians, Christ died for all mankind. He substituted himself for all sins of all time, past, present, and future. In one instant, all of God's wrath was poured on Jesus Christ. All the filth, the pain, the suffering, the guilt, the rejection of the Father in one instance was poured on Jesus. Hunted down by armed men and persecuted, Christ dies. On the third day, Christ rose from the dead with all power in his hand because he, my friends, can take it. He did the impossible. He did what we couldn't do. He bore our sin and shame because he can take it. It was his grace and mercy and love that was shown toward us. Friends, it's moving to experience such emotions while watching a movie. But to know that we have been given something far greater should cause us to live in a way that shows our appreciation to Christ. Listen, you can't fix the problem of sin. The Bible says our righteousness is that of filthy rags. It's a heavy burden trying to be self-righteous. But Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I'll leave you with this last verse. Let's see what Jesus says about substituting himself for you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Listen, friends, he actually calls you friends. He laid down his life for you. And though he knew he would suffer immense pain, he said, not my will, but thy will be done, Father. And he died in your place so that you might live. He lost it all and gave everything he had so that you might have eternal life. How do you respond to that? 